Welcome to Mark Gibson's Human Risk Channel. Accountant with the Simation CPA, MBA, CMA, ACPA, ASA, Australia. Enjoy learning! Let's now go to receivables management. So, uh, like, uh, like I said, in working capital management, we're dealing with managing different current assets and different current liabilities. So today, uh, we'll cover receivables management. So what is accounts receivable management? It is the formulation and administration of plans and policies related to sales on account and ensuring that the maintenance of receivables at a predetermined level and their collectability as planned. No? So class, no? so ang minamanage natin dito is accounts receivable. Sabi natin, um, credit is good, but cash is king. No? So while uh, it's okay to sell on account, uh, we also need to make sure that we're able to collect those uh, receivables. No? So, what are the ways of accelerating collection of receivables? Number one, shorten uh, credit terms. No, so uh, when we say credit terms, ito yung kung hanggang kailan ba siya pwede magbayad. No, so usually, uh, sabi natin na nagpautang ka, uh, and you expect payment within the next thirty days. No, hindi ito yung nagpautang ka, eh, sin zone ka na lang. No. So, hindi, hindi ito yung pinag-uusapan natin na, na gano'n. Na. Siyempre, uh, para lang mas ma-appreciate mo yung concept ng accounts receivable, ito yung uh, parang nangungutang, napakabait, no? Tapos biglang pagsingilan na, sin zone ka na lang, no? So, number two, offer special discounts to customers who pay their accounts within specified periods. So, paano yan? Uh, sige, bayaran mo ko uh, in 10 days, you'll get... Um, 5% discount. So, parang ganun, na? Uh, number three, speed up the mailing time of payments from customers to the firm. Oh, sige. Uh, right now, class, uh, even multinational, no, it's uh, it's becoming a widespread practice or best practice within multinational companies na uh, instead of collecting uh, receivables or sabi natin, checks from customers eh they course it through banks no so yung banko they serve as a collecting agent on behalf of the company of course merong cost doon pero uh, dahil nga sila na yung collect and we have account with that bank of uh, with that with that particular bank eh yung crediting uh, nung nung uh, nung payment na yon is automatic no so like I said, automat del automatic and that bank particular is uh, serving as our collecting agent. Eh, mas mabilis na minimize flow. That is to reduce the time during which payments received by the firm remain uncollected funds. No, basically, class, um, the longer that your uh, receivable stays in your uh, uh, stays uncollected, eh, mas nagkakaroon ng mas malaking chance na hindi mo na makollecta yan. Na. So, what are the aids in anal analyzing receivables? So, ano daw yung mga pwedeng makatulong sa atin? No? So, ratio of receivables to net credit sales. Eh, pero alam mo na yan during our discussion on financial statement analysis. No? Pero, just the same, pag-uusapan pa rin natin lahat yan. Number two, receivable turnover. Number three, average collection period. And number four, aging of accounts. So, itong aging of accounts class, uh, usually in U.S. gaapa uh, sa uh, using the U.S. generally accepted accounting principle. Uh, basically, if your uh, accounts receivable stays, stays uh, uncollected between 180 days or more, eh, kailangan mo na mag-accrue. Ano, ano yung dapat mong ina -accrue? You have to provide for bad debt uh, uh, allowance for, for doubtful accounts. No? So that's uh, US GAAP. And uh, most of the uh, multinational companies, they, they, they are present in the US. Eh, no? So that's why uh, the US standard, we have this uh, US standards, no? IFRS. And so, okay. So to illustrate that, Let's proceed with discussion problem number one. 
So in problem number one, what are the requirements? So uh, calculate the firm's operating cycle. Letter B, calculate the firm's cash conversion cycle. Uh, letter C, calculate the amount of resources needed to support the firm's cash conversion cycle. So as you can see, class, this is just also a bit of uh, a review of what we've discussed during the cash management uh, session and a little bit also of uh, receivable management. No? So let's do uh, discussion problem one. Okay, bago natin pag-usapan yung discussion problem one, let, uh, let me discuss muna ano ba tong operating cycle. So sabi natin, operating cycle, ito yung uh, from cash to cash. No? So syempre, uh, at the beginning of the uh, operation, meron kang cash. Anong gagawin mo dun sa cash na yun? Uh, bibili mo ng raw materials. Anong gagawin mo sa raw materials? You will process it to convert it into finished goods no of course pag finished goods na you have to sell it no uh, pag binenta mo na it will turn or it will be recorded as accounts receivable sabi natin na on account no binenta mo on account and though um syempre kung meron ka na accounts receivable eh kailangan mo siya ma-convert into cash no kaya sinasabi natin operating that's the operating cycle no so from cash to cash no so from uh Initially, meron ka cash, you have to buy raw materials, convert it to finished goods, and kaya nga cycle, uulit-ulitin ko lang. No? So, ngayon, kung meron kang operating cycle, ang question dito is, gano'n ba kahaba how many days to complete a cycle? No? So, ulitin natin na. Uh, pag pinag-uusapan natin is operating cycle, meron kang cash, you purchase raw materials, you convert that raw materials into finished goods. So, nilagay mo ng uh, direct material, the, the direct labor, indirect, uh, indirect labor, yung mga factory overhead mo. Uh, so, you convert it into finished goods. Siyempre, finished goods, gusto mo maibenta, you sell it um, on account, pinautang mo. Now, from the accounts receivable, kailangan mo siya makolect into cash. No? So that's the operating cycle. Now, if we're going to uh, calculate how long is an operating cycle, eh, syempre, kailangan natin ngayon i-determine yung mga age ng process. No? So, nabawa ito, uh, from materials to finished goods, so meron, we need to determine the age of materials. Siyempre, pag finished goods na siya, we have to determine naman the age of finished goods or the days to convert finished goods to accounts receivable. Of course, pag naibenta na, we have now to determine the age of AR. This is also known as the receivables collection period or the day sales in receivable. Na? So, para lang mas mabilis natin maintindihan, simply, uh, let's put it as the age of AR. Okay? So, yun pala, class. Pag nakuha na natin yung age of material, age of finished goods, and age of AR, we can now com com calculate the operating cycle. Okay? Ngayon, um, to aid us to calculate for this, no? We, we now have to uh, look for the different turnover. No? So, paano daw makompute yung age? Eh, kailangan natin alamin yung mga turnover. And like I said, these, are, these concepts are not new to you kasi we have discussed this during the financial statement analysis uh, session. No? So, pero just the same, let's review. No? So, sabi natin, class, para mas mabilis, diba? Tin tinuro ko pa sa inyo to, Paano mas mabilis ma-recall uh, ma yung formula ng turnover? So sabi natin, kung ano yung, kung ano yung turnover, kung ano yung hinihingi na turnover, yun yung uh, denominator mo, pero in average. So tignan mo ha, uh, kailangan natin, di ba, materials inventory, turnover. Kasi nga, kinocompute natin si age of materials. So basically, ito yan. 
age of finished goods so ito yan and age of ar so yun yun na to get the operating cycle yan na tinapatan lang natin ngayon paano daw yung pag compute ng turnover so materials inventory turnover sabi ko ang denominator is ko ano yung hinihingi lagyan lang ng average no so it's average materials inventory Pag finished goods, so average, average finished goods inventory. Pag AR, it's average AR. Of course, kung AP, it's average AP. Ngayon, ano yung numerator? So, sabi natin, yung numerator would be the, uh, kung ano yung kapartner niya na account. No? So, kung bawa average, uh, kung ang bawa, this is raw materials, so yung materials used. No? Kung finished goods, Cost of goods sold. Kasi yun yung partner niya, no? Kung average AR, ito, ha, tandaan, it's credit sales. So, ito, importante, kasi sabi natin, ang sales could be from, could be cash sales and credit sales, no? So, in this case, to calculate the accounts receivable turnover, we only have to get the credit sales, no? Similar to accounts payable turnover, we should get the credit purchases only no so drop the cash purchases okay now na compute na natin yung mga turnover no so to compute for the age pala ang sabi is ang denominator natin is the turnover no eh alam na natin paano yung pagcompute ng turnover ito yon so happy na tayo diyan ito na ngayon yung pag-usapan natin number of days in a year Ito class, this should be given in a problem. Uh, kung hindi given, we'll use, three, we'll use 365. Kung wala sa choices, we'll use 360. So, ganun na. Uh, pag hindi given, kailangan natin una gamitan 365 or 360. Huh? Kasi nga, uh, hindi naman tinitest kung alam natin yung number of, number of days in a year. No? Kasi, Paano naman kung ang sinabi ng problem is uh, use 230 days? So, huwag ka nang makipag-argue. No? So, just follow the, the problem. No? So, follow what is uh, uh, given and uh, just compute for the required, uh, I mean, for the requirement. No? So, kung alam na natin yan, let's now go to discussion problem number one. Okay. So, in discussion problem number one, Oops. Yeah. So, sabi natin, um, letter A, calculate for the firm's operating cycle. Pero sabi natin, bago natin makumpute yung operating cycle, we have to get the age of material, age of finished goods, and age of AR. No? So, isa-isay natin siya uh, with the help of this formula. No? So, una, uh, materials inventory turnover. So, dito muna tayo ha. Materials inventory turnover, sabi natin the formula to get this is materials used divided by average materials inventory. So, meron tayong materials used, that's 4,320,000. So, ayan. Divided by the average materials inventory. So, meron kang beginning balance, Meron kang ending balance divided by 2 to get the average ending inventory. So that's 200,000 plus 40,000 divided by 2. And that's 120,000 pesos. No? So uh, 4,320,000 divided by 120,000. So that's 36 times. So meron ka ng man materials inventory turnover. Next. Finish goods inventory turnover. So, again, the formula is cost of goods sold divided by the average finished goods inventory. So, given also is your cost of goods sold, that's 7,200,000 divided by average finished goods inventory. In this case, class, uh, the finished goods inventory beginning balance is 300,000. Pero pansinin mo kung... Uh, binasa mo yung problem, sabi dito, there was no change in the finished goods inventory account during the year. So meaning, yung 300,000 mo na beginning, wala daw naging change. 
So therefore, that's also your uh, ending balance. So simply, 300,000 plus 300,000 divided by 2 is 300,000. Okay? So wag magpapalito dyan, ha? 7,200,000 divided by 300,000, that's 24 times, and that's your finished goods inventory turnover. Next, accounts receivable turnover. Paano ang pag-compute? It's credit sales divided by average sales. So, tandaan, it's credit sales. Paano natin ko-compute yung credit sales? 80% of sales are on credit. So, how much is the sales? 18 million. So, 18 million multiplied by 80%. So, that's the credit sales. All right? Now, average AR. So, given are your uh, beginning AR and ending AR. So, that's 1,600,000 plus 800,000 divided by 2. So, that's 1,200,000. So we are now ready to compute for the accounts receivable turnover. So that's 14,400,000 divided by 1,200,000. So that's 12 times. Siguro for the sake of ano na lang, the, uh, discussion, kasi nandito na lang din naman si AP, kompletuhin na natin. No? Paano yung compute ng accounts payable turnover? So that's credit purchases. I-highlight ko yung credit purchases. Divided by average AP or the average accounts payable. So, uh, sabi kasi, cash purchases are 60%. So, therefore, 40% is then credit purchases. How much is the total purchases? It's 9 million. So, 9 million multiplied by 40%. Baka may magtanong, saan nakuha yung 40%? So, that's from... Siyempre, complementary ito, no? So, meron ka total purchase of 9 million. Sabi dyan, 60% is cash purchase. So, therefore, the other 40% will be your credit purchase, no? Credit purchases. So, average AP. Ayun, binigay na yung average AP. That's 200,000. Okay, so uh, we can now calculate for the accounts payable turnover. So that's 3,600,000 divided by 200,000. So that's 18 times. Sige. Computein na ngayon natin yung age. Age of materials inventory. Sabi natin number of days in a year divided by the turnover. Eh, di ba ang, ang nakalagay dito? The firm spends 36 million in operating cycle investment each year to concentrate assume a 360 day year so 360 divided by 36 so that's 10 days Three hundred sixty divided by 24 so the age of finished goods is 15 and 360 divided by 12, the age of AR is 30. And finally, uh, 360 divided by 18, so that's the age of your AP. No? So ngayon, kompleto na yung mga kailangan nating uh, information. Let's now go to requirement number one, operating cycle. So calculate the firm's operating cycle. So you have your age of materials of 10. Age of finished goods of 15. Age of AR of 30. So the total operating cycle is 55 days. Sakat sa mata. Yun. Okay. So now, letter B, calculate the firm's cash conversion cycle. So it's uh, the formula to get the cash conversion cycle. It's your operating cycle less the age of payable. No? So nakalculate natin kanina yung operating cycle, 55, less age of payable of 20. So the total cash conversion cycle is 35.
Calculate, letter C, calculate the amount of resources needed to support the firm's cash conversion cycle. No? So sabi dun sa last na sentence, the firm spends 336 million in operating cycle investment each year. Ang tinatanong lang naman sa atin is the amount of resources needed. Of course, class, uh, three, three, 36 million divided by 360. So that's 100,000 multiplied by the cash conversion cycle of 35. No? So we get 3,500,000. So that's, um, that's the answer to requirement C. No? The amount of resources needed to support the firm's cash conversion cycle. It's 3,500,000 pesos. Okay. So that's discussion problem number one. Like I said, class, no. So this this is not a new concept, no. So we've discussed this already uh, in the cash management uh, session. No? So it's good to just have a review, no. So let's go to discussion problem number two. So the requirements are number one, uh, profitability of additional sales. Number two, cost of additional investment in receivables. Number three, compute for the additional bad debt loss. Four, cost of additional investment in inventory. Number five, additional cash discounts. And number six, net change in pre-tax profits. <clears throat> say, say natin to, no? So let me read the problem. Piolo Incorporated sells fertilizers and pesticides to various retail hardware and nursery stores on terms of 210 net 30 o ito sa basic accounting nyo rin ulit no paano pag may nakita tayong gantong terms anong ibig sabihin 2 over 10 net 30 so ibig sabihin daw pag yung customer ni Piolo nagbayad within 10 days they are entitled to 2% discount of course uh, beyond that, eh, wala sila makukuwang discount, no? So that's, di ba sabi natin, this is um, one way to make sure that we will be able to uh, collect uh, faster, no? So, the looking problem, the company currently does not grant credit to retailers that are classified as somewhat risky customers. Ito daw yung mga uh, sinisin zone ka na lang pag singilan na no so syempre discretion of discretion of piolo yon na kung madalas ka naman palang sin zone lang eh wag na lang kita pagbentahan no or pag kung pagbebentahan man kita uh, ato uh, cash na lang no so hindi kita bibigyan ng credit line dahil nga sinisin zone mo lang naman ako no pag singilan na an estimated of um, an estimated 5,475,000 in additional sales per year could be generated if the company extended credit to such somewhat risky retailers. So, ano ibig sabihin na to? Yung mga nagsisin zone sa'yo, no? Kay Piolo. Uh, pag daw pinagbigyan mo to at pinautang mo to, eh, ito yung additional sales natin na makukuha doon, no? So, 5,475,000. Okay? So the estimated average collection period for these customers is 75 days. So imagine class, dun sa mga normal customers mo, ang term, was, term lang is 30 days. No? Ayan, nakalagay 210 net 30. So within 30 days, makakakollect ka na. No? Pero dito sa mga nagsisin zone sa'yo, aba, it will take longer. It will take 75 days bago ka makakollecta. Okay? So tuloy ko pa. The expected bad debt loss ratio is 5%. So imagine um, 5% of the, the total sales to this uh, somewhat risky customers, eh, pinoproject mo na agad as bad debt. No? So ganito ka risky nga itong mga uh, customers na to, no? The company also estimates that an additional inventory investment of 800,000 is required for the anticipated sales increase. Of course, uh, dahil nga magbebenta ka, so therefore you have to also make sure that you have inventory with you. Kasi ano nga naman ibebenta mo? No? 
So sabi, additional inventory investment of 800,000. Approximately 10% of these customers are expected to take the cash discount. So yun naman pala. So while this is somewhat risky, eh meron pa rin naman palang customer that will, uh, customers belong to this group that will uh, take the opportunity to get discount. No? So meaning they will pay within 10 days and get 2% discount. No? So sabi natin na, out of, Sabi natin, out of 100% na somewhat risky, 10% daw dyan, eh, mag avail ng cash discount. No? Yun lang naman ibig sabihin niya. The company's variable cost ratio is 75%, and its required pre-tax rate of return on investment in current assets is 18%. Pag-usapan natin tong variable cost ratio. So, uh, in, in cost accounting and in management accounting, we have this so-called contribution margin uh, format of income statement. No? So you have your sales less variable cost is equals to your contribution margin less fixed cost is your, then uh, you, you get your net income. No? So that's the, the concept. No? Uh, ngayon, kung meron kang variable cost ratio, so, paano kaya kinocompute ang variable cost ratio? That's your total variable cost divided by sales. Sige, para siguro mas maintindihan to, let's do discussion problem number two. Na? Stay with me ha, kasi medyo uh, lengthy yung problem number two, pero don't worry, iisa-isay naman natin. Na? In fact, during... Uh, Earlier, no, when I was reading the problem, I already uh, spotted no, those or highlighted those uh, pertinent information that we will we'll need. No? So, una, yung approach natin, no, para natin sa elementary pa rin, no? kasi naalala mo elementary, meron ka pang template on what is us, what are given, no. So, ganun ginagawa nating approach, no. So, what are the... Uh, uh, given information. So, una, meron ka additional sales, 5,475,000. Average collection period, 75 days. So, given naman yan, no? Ah, yun. Bad debt loss ratio, 5% given. Additional inventory, 800,000. Kasi nga, uh, serving these um, customers will actually require you to invest in uh, inventory. So sabi natin, 10% uh, will take cash discounts. So out of this pool of customers, 10% no? uh, down ito will opt to uh, get cash discounts. So meaning they will pay within 10 days. Ito na ngayon yung variable cost ratio. Ito yung gusto kong pag-usapan natin briefly. So sabi natin kanina, uh, in cost accounting and in management accounting, we have this so-called contribution margin format of income statement. Kasi di ba ang familiar ka uh, in, in basic accounting is your, your income statement, your, your sales, cost of goods sold, your uh, equals gross margin, less operating expenses, uh, equals your, your net income or, or profit. Di ba ganun? And in, in cost accounting and in management accounting, we have new concept. No? So this is the contribution margin format of uh, income statement. So you have your sales, less variable cost is equals to your contribution margin, less fixed cost equals your net income. Pero hindi man natin kailangan discuss lahat yan, dito tayo mag-focus. So, ang sinasabi lang na sa atin dito is, kung ang variable cost ratio is 75%, and your sales is 100%, obviously. So, meron ka ngayon complementary ratio, which is your contribution margin ratio, which is 25%. No? So, yun lang yung kailangan natin dito. No? So, meron kang variable cost ratio of 75%. Alam mo na agad na ang yung CMR or your contribution margin ratio is equivalent to 25%. Alright. 
And next, required rate of return of uh, 18%. So given naman yan. Sige. Isaysayin natin ngayon yung requirement. Number one, profitability of additional sales. So how much is the additional sales? It's 5,475,000 given naman yan. And of course, to calculate for the profitability, eh, we have to get the contribution margin ratio. Kaya nga, important ito kanina. Kaya natin discuss tong portion ng uh, contribution margin format of your income statement. No? So sabi natin, kung ang variable cost ratio mo is 20, 75%, therefore, meron ka ngayon 25% contribution margin ratio. Dahil ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is profitability and because this is just addition excuse me this is just additional sales we can assume that there will be no additional fixed cost to be uh, incur to be incurred no so dahil nga additional lang siya eh, eh alam mo naman ng mga fixed cost natin uh, remain fixed eh, no ba kaya nga sila fixed cost so uh, hindi siya uh, hindi siya dependent dun sa volume no so therefore uh, total profitability of additional sales, magkano yung kita from that additional sales, no? It's 1,368,750. So that's requirement number one. Requirement number two, cost of additional investment in receivables, no? So paano yan? Uh, average investment, uh, average additional sales per day, so, kinukuha lang natin yung additional sales divided by 365 days. O, so, yan. Ha? Kanina, 360 this time. Ang pinapagamit sa atin is 365 days. No? So, meron ka ng average additional sales per day of 15,000. Multiply by the average collection period. O, again, class, given yan. Lagay ko lang dito to para at least meron tayong uh, reference pa rin, no? So, 75 days. So, makukuha mo na yung additional investment in receivables. No? 1,125,000. Now, class, pag-usapan natin itong required rate of return. The reason why we're using this required rate of return, eh, ito ba yung uh, what if you use your funds to invest in another, uh, in another investment, no? Kaya nilalagay natin siya as cost of the additional investment. Ito kasi yung uh, possible na kinita na natin. No? And yet, dahil nga nag-invest tayo dito sa uh, customers natin na somewhat risky, ito yung katumbas na cost na uh, nage-generate natin. No? So that's eight, equivalent to 18%. No? Given naman yung... Uh, given naman yung 18% sa problem. So, the total cost of additional investment in receivable is 202,500. So, that's 1,125,000 multiplied by 18%. Okay. Next, um, uh, next requirement is additional bad debt loss. Eh, pero ito, kabisado mo na, no? So, sabi lang naman sa additional bad debt loss, eh, given din naman yung bad debt loss ratio. Sabi, uh, if we cater to this customers, a eh, 5% down yan is bad debt. No? So, therefore, kunin mo lang yung additional sales of 5,475,000 multiplied by the bad debt ratio. Lagay ko to dito para at least masundan mo pa rin yung problem. So that's 273,750. Okay, requirement number four. Cost of additional inventory. Cost of additional investment in inventory. So ito class, pag-usapan ulit natin to. Dahil nga you're going to in, you are going to cater to these customers, no? yung mga somewhat risky. Of course, 
para ma-cater mo sila, you have to invest in inventory. Otherwise, wala kayo ibibenta sa kanila, no? So, magkano daw yun? So, additional inventory of 800,000, given naman sa problem yan, multiply by the required rate of return of 18%, no? So, 800,000 multiplied by 18, 18%, so that's 144,000 pesos, no? Requirement number five, additional cash discount. So ito ha, di ba sabi natin kanina, uh, out of this uh, customer, pool of customer, no? sabi natin somewhat risky, ito yung mga nagsizin zone lang. Uh, 5% down yan, uh, no, 10% down yan uh, will, uh, will pay within 10 days. no? So therefore, they will be entitled to 2% cash discounts no so paano natin mako-compute yan ngayon so of course meron tayong additional sales 5,475,000 out of 5,475,000 10% down yan mag-avail so magkano yung 10% so that's 5,475,000 multiplied by 10% makukuha mo is 547,500 ngayon magkano yung discount syempre 2% di ba 2 over 10, 2% pag nagbayad within 10 days. So that's 2%. 547,500 multiplied by 2%. So that's 10,915. That's the additional discount. Okay. And finally, uh, question number 6. In question number 6, ang tinatanong lang is net change in pre-tax profits. So imagine na um, ang pinapa-compute sa iyo is ano ba yung uh, yung kikitain mo out of catering if you cater for this somewhat risky customers no So all we have to do is of course kunin natin yung profitability of additional sales eh na-compute na natin yan kanina so that's 1,368,750 less lahat ng cost na na compute natin. So isa-isay natin, you have your cost of additional investment in receivable na compute natin kanina. So that's 202,500 less the additional bad debt of 273,750 less the additional investment in inventory, cost of additional investment in inventory of 144,000 and of course, the additional discount of 10,950. So, kunin natin yung sum. So, that's 737,550. So, that's answer to requirement number 6. And that ends our discussion on uh, receivable management. So, this has been your instructor, Mark Gibson. Thank you for learning with us. See you in our next discussion. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!